In this video, I'm going to discuss pneumomedistinum, its appearances on cross-sectional imaging and the chest radiograph. The causes of pneumomedistinum can be divided into intrathoracic and extrathoracic. Blunt chest trauma is perhaps one of the commonest causes, where you get a sudden rise in intra-alveolar pressure, leading to rupture of the alveolus. Valsalva's manoeuvre, plugged or narrowed airways and vomiting, as in Boerhaave syndrome, can lead to pneumomedistinum. Don't forget iatrogenic causes, fractures, uh, including sinus fractures, where there's a communication of gas into the fascial planes and the mediastinum, and retroperitoneal gas from perforated viscous below the diaphragm. Asthma and barotrauma from positive pressure ventilation are very important causes of raised intra-alveolar pressure leading to pneumomediastinum. So in blunt chest trauma, there is a sudden rise in intra-alveolar pressure, which leads to ruptured alveoli. Air tracks from the alveolar sac into the interstitium, then into the perivascular and peribronchial fascial sheath, and this is known as the Macklin effect. So in effect, you get alveolar rupture and gas tracks into the perivascular and peribronchial sheath into the space between the parietal pleura and the trachea, up into the soft tissues, which are represented by the subcutaneous tissue. The parietal pleura is denoted by the green line and the visceral pleura by the blue line. You may get gas tracking into the pleural space if there is a breach of the uh, visceral pleura. But usually what happens is it goes into the space between the parietal pleura and the mediastinal contents, in this case the trachea. This is where the surgical emphysema occurs as gas gathers in the subcutaneous fat. I'm going to discuss a case of a 22-year-old male, uh, previously fit and healthy, who received blunt chest trauma following a rugby tackle. On the chest radiograph you can see the thin line which is represented by the parietal pleura, which has been stripped from the mediastinal surface by gas between the mediastinum and the parietal pleura. The CT shows very nicely the gas tracking in the subcutaneous soft tissues. It outlines the trachea and the esophagus. And you can see the uh, nice delineation of the mediastinal structures. Uh, all of this structure here is mediastinal fat, which has been displaced by the mediastinal gas. You can see the left brachiocephalic vein. Here is the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. This is the right brachiocephalic vein, which joins to the left to form the SVC a little lower down. Here is the arch of the aorta. Here is the azacus vein joining to the SVC. You can nicely see uh, around the left main bronchus and anterior to the carina and you can also see the anterior junction line uh, being delineated by gas. Gas also tracks around the heart and you can see a little collection of gas in the minor fissure on the right hand side. Here is the esophagus outlined by gas in the mediastinum. This is uh, bronchus intermedius and there's the azacus vein. There's the descending aorta. This is a coronal reconstruction showing the esophagus which is nicely demonstrated. There's the wall of the esophagus and here is gas in the mediastinal compartment. Here is the aorta, 
there is the Azacus vein. Here is a sagittal and coronal section. Uh, again, this uh, shows very nicely the mediastinal gas tracking up into the um, pre-cervical soft tissue, the sublingual subcutaneous fat, and into the subcutaneous fat of the anterior chest wall. This is the coronal uh, reconstruction showing the gas tracking right up into the neck. There are other radiological signs of pneumomediastinum, namely the continuous diaphragm sign, the thymic spinnaker sail sign, or angel's wing sign, uh, ring around the artery sign, tubular artery sign, and there are other signs which are much rarer to see on the chest x-ray. This is a patient who has a deep sulcus due to a pneumothorax, and they've got the continuous diaphragm sign. They've also got thymic sign which is being stripped off the mediastinum by the pneumomediastinum seen here. Note also the surgical emphysema. This was a young child who had a tracheostomy secondary to epiglottitis and the barrow trauma of the positive pressure ventilation leads to a pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum. This is a patient who has emphysema. There's a very large bulla you can see lots of surgical emphysema and the continuous diaphragm sign. Here is another patient who has the continuous diaphragm sign. They are intubated. There's a tracheostomy here. And note also there's an NG tube which is in the right lower lobe bronchus. So that is misplaced. They have two intercostal drains on the right, one on the left, and a good deal of surgical emphysema. Here is another ITU patient with surgical emphysema, which is tracking via the fascial planes. We have evidence of pneumomediastinum and the continuous diaphragm sign. This is the same patient on a coronal CT construction showing very nicely that gas gets trapped between the pericardium and the diaphragm, making that diaphragm continuous from left to right.